Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Meet the Poet, their poem and my perspective. I'm sure you guys are wondering why I'm dressed like this. Okay, today I am doing the poem titled New Tongue, written by Elizabeth Lucy Kamara. Now, this poem talks about the African culture and so I just thought of, you know, representing the African culture. Today, you will get to listen to the biography of the poet, watch a short video by my students and also listen to a critical analysis of the poem by me. Do enjoy this video. Thank you. Meet the poets. Elizabeth Lucy Alberta Kamara is a Sierra Leonean educator, writer, and poet. Born and bred in Sierra Leone, she is the second of three children. As a writer, Elizabeth Kamara has three poetry collections to her credit. They are Distilled, To Cross for a Daughter, Stolen Laughter. New Tongue is one of the poems in the collection of her poems. Elizabeth Kamara's influence extends beyond her written works as she contributes to various national and international publications. New Tongue is not essentially about language change, but about cultural shifts. Elizabeth Kamara is happily married with two sons. Now, the poem. Yeah. 
recitation by Mrs. Balogun. So what do you guys think about this video? Okay, so personally, I love this video because this video should have given you a picture of what this poem is all about. In the video, you see some set of students telling their teacher they are no longer interested in African culture. One of them particularly said that the African culture is so boring and this really got the teacher irritated and then the, the teacher started reciting the poem, New Tongue. So what is this poem all about? In my own opinion, New Tongue is written in three verses of five uneven stanza. The word New Tongue is a metonymy. A metonymy is a figure of speech that uses an object or symbol to represent someone or something. So New Tongue in this poem does not necessarily mean new language. New Tongue in this poem means the Western culture. So the poem is talking about the neglect of the African culture by a young generations of African and how they have conveniently adopted the borrowed culture. The poem mourns a total detachment of the African culture. Stanza 1 begins to tell us the problem at hand. It tells us how this young generation speak new tongues. They dance new dance. It says their eyes ravels in the wonders of the new. Now she begins to state the problem at hand. She begins to inform us that there is a problem at hand and that the problem is that the younger generation are now neglecting the African culture. In stanza two, she begins to state the consequences of what they have used our culture, I mean the African culture to do. The African culture has become a thing of the past, disregarded past. It has become a remnant. And it is so bad that family friendship ties are now broken, bonds, and thrown away. You know, I like, I like stanza three. I like stanza three because here, Elizabeth Kamara comes out. There, there, there was like a shift in the mood. She starts by saying, a new generation, careless, careless of bonds, of family, of heritage, of friends. Now, in this particular stanza, you see Elizabeth's mood moving into an angry mood. Now she's angry because now she begins to see the effects of this act. The younger generation care less about culture. They care less about heritage. And then the most painful thing is that they no longer regard the old. She said, no room for elders. And then she begins to identify the fact that, apart from the fact that respect has been thrown into the bottomless pit, there is now a problem of individualism, whereby she states that every man of himself, by himself, for himself. And so she begins to identify, she begins to identify the consequences of this borrowed culture employed by the young generation. She ends, the, she ends the poem by saying, a cold wind comes upon her. And then the poem necessarily did not give us a solution to this problem. Personally, I really do not like that. You know, like I said, it's like a critical analysis. You are open to your own opinion. I feel like she should have told us what we should have done. But she ended the poem by saying that this set of people, do not even want to look back at all. They are just ready to keep following this borrowed culture. And so that is the analysis of the poem. It's a straightforward analysis. It talks about the neglect of the African culture by the young generations of Africa, how they have detached themselves from our culture and how they have embraced new culture how they have embraced a borrowed culture okay so let us look at the themes in the poem we have the theme of cultural shifts the theme of cultural shift whereby the old culture is no longer regarded and then a new culture has been embraced we also have the theme of generational shifts whereby the younger the young generation no longer care for the old there is no respect for the old any longer we also have the theme of loss there is a loss now 
because gradually we are beginning to lose out you know loss of family loss of culture loss of heritage so there is a theme of loss in this poem let's look at the mood of the poem the mood of the poem is that of lamentation and then sadness you see that the beginning of the poem talks about it, it was more of a lamentation she was lamenting and talking about the problem at hand and then there was a shift in her mood she was sad and she was also angry the tone of the poem is critical very observant and then okay also in the mood we have the mood of disappoint, disappointment the poet's personnel obviously was disappointed in the younger generation okay let's look at the poetic devices in this poem we have simile their minds turn inwards like a borrowed clothes we have alliteration the dance new dance family and friendship you see repetition rep repetition of consonant sounds being used here we also have the use of synecdoche synecdoche is when you use a whole to represent a part and a part you know to use to represent it all we have their eyes their eyes ravel in the wonders of the new and then we also have we also have pawn there was the use of pawn play on words there was the use of pawn um i'm sure you guys enjoyed this video i'm trying to remember if i did not forget anything so i've talked about the subject matter I've talked about the themes, I've talked about the mood, I've also talked about the tone, and I've tried to mention some of the poetic devices in this poem. So what do you guys think about this poem? Do you think the poem is, you know... Okay, then another thing I love about this poem is the fact that the poem is relatable. We can relate to this poem because, you know, the generation that we have right now, they are called the Gen Z generation. And we can, you can, we can see that this set of people, this set of younger generation are gradually throwing our roots into the bottomless pit. Yes, I remember another poetic devices. We also have allusion. Allusion is also seen in this poem. We have two types of allusion. We have the biblical allusion where she talked about the Red Sea. And then we have the historical allusion. Historical allusion where she talked about every man for himself, by himself, of himself. This is um, the definition of democracy as defined by Martin Luther King Jr. And so I, I love the poem. I love the poem. I love the poem. I just didn't like the fact that there was no resolution. She did not provide a solution. So I have come to the end of this video. I hope you guys were able to learn one or two things. Like I said, it is poetry. Your uh, your opinion is very welcome. Please, please drop a comment in the comment section. Let me hear your view about this poem. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Please share this video, hit the notification button to know when I upload more videos because I will be uploading more and more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.